We're the first black owned and African owned home fragrance brand at Sephora. So I've been milking that in, honey. We are gonna be going back again later on this week to see like the whole production and assembly and the pouring of the candles. And now I have like a brand, like a company, something tangible. So from day one, I pretty much knew I eventually wanted to tap into like home goods. We weren't ready early on to work with Sephora because literally like we did not even have like the capabilities to like keep up with the demand. That was like right before the time that we launched. So we just kind of had to like get over that initial hump. And then when things kind of just like balanced out, we were like, all right, what would a partnership, you know, a retail partner look like? And you know, Sephora's were already ready. So that's how it started. Even though people already know me for makeup, they've known I've had this like long standing love and relationship with fragrance and home fragrance, candles, perfume. The people who've been following me for a minute, they've always known that's always been there. I started talking about starting this brand with my fiance 2019, like a year and a half before the world shut down. And then we picked it up again, like I remember around the holidays of 2019. But the good thing is everything was already in place. So it's not like we started from scratch anyway. Like we already had like vessel samples and stuff like that. Like we had that there. This is the pre-launch and you're almost sold out. The That's so exciting. Like, wow. So what we thought was gonna last, like I'm not even joking, like maybe three months, sold out in like two hours. And I was looking at my fiance like, what did we do? Like, I was actually scared because I was like, this is not what they think it is. Like we're not, we, we ain't got that kind of like, we don't even have that kind of like manpower. Like we cannot accommodate that. And then when we fully launched, they did, this, they did, they did it again. I was like, yeah, you, you guys did not, <laughs> we are not ready for that. Like it was insane. Like, that's, yeah, that's how, we, that's how we launched. It was great. These are kind of like the four that I want people to, get an intro to our brand with. So when we created our first ever candle collection, our core collection, the four that started it all, I was thinking, I knew that I wanted to revolve around the number four. And I went with four because, you know, I kind of wanted each candle to represent a season. We didn't want to launch with like 10, you know, that cost a lot of money. We weren't there yet, we were just starting. I was like, okay, I think four is good. I think four is like just enough to like, get a general brand overview, you know, like just to get people's feet wet. And that's what we did. We launched one that is kind of a sticky, sweet gourmand. Then there's another one that smells like a coffee shop. It's a little bit more fall appropriate. Then there's one that's a, a citrusy, zesty, fresh scent that I think is great all year round. And then we also have another scent that's a little bit more coconutty, a little bit more airy, and it's amazing in the summer. So I was thinking, okay, if we only had these four candles for I don't know how long, um, these are kind of like the four that I want people to get an intro to our brand with. I knew since childhood I love creating. I've always been into fashion clothes. I grew up in LA and my mom is African-American. She's from Illinois. My dad is a Nigerian immigrant. I don't know how the hell they met and I don't even know how in the world their two chaotic personalities mesh, but somehow they did. They, you know, really instilled a lot of really unique qualities. One, my mom was super creative and she was kind of like, do whatever you want in life, as long as you're happy, whatever. And my dad was like, you are actually going to be a doctor. And I was like, okay. But that obviously didn't work <laughs> for very long. I knew since childhood, I loved creating. I've always been into fashion clothes, color, beauty. I just knew when I was in high school that I was gonna go to like fashion school, study fashion, but that didn't happen. So I ended up at Cal State San Bernardino and it was my first year. And mind you, this is coming from somebody who's never failed a class, never like even, maybe, maybe worst case scenario, a C. But I, my first semester, I failed every class. <laughs> and I was just like, is it the books or is it me? And then it was like, the next semester, it was the same thing. It was just like bad. Like I was just not good at college. The college that I went to, you know, they sent me a letter basically saying like, well, you know, you're not meeting the tuition requirements. So 
if you don't get that act together, like you're gonna lose your tuition. And since I lived on campus and they threatened to take away tuition, that means I also wouldn't have a place to live. I kind of thought about it and I was like, well, my parents aren't really forcing me to be here anymore. Like, it's not like they can pay for this. So if you leave, like, what are they gonna do? Like, you're not gonna get in trouble. So that was like when I left. And that was like the first time I really made my own like big girl adult decision. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad I did because I, I didn't realize at the time, but like I just was not built for a traditional university. Like it just was not the right fit for me. My best friend used to be like, well, you like makeup, why don't you start a YouTube channel? Why don't you start showing people like the little books that you be doing? 2009, I'm out of college. This was roughly a year into me being in the reserves. And um, when you're a reservist, you don't have full-time work. Like you're, you can still go to school, you can still work. So I had a lot of time in my hands, maybe a little bit too much time. My best friend used to be like, well, you like makeup, makeup on YouTube is blowing up. Like, why don't you start a YouTube channel? Like, why don't you start showing people like the little looks that you be doing? And I was just like, girl, I don't know about that. Like, I was just not interested in being in front of the camera at all. But then at the same time, I was like, well, I'm not really doing anything else. And I'm kind of miserable. So like, why not? So I started my YouTube channel. I uploaded my first video. And this was like back in the day where like old, old school beauty gurus will know what time it is when I say this. But back in the day, instead of talking to the camera, it used to be like picture slideshows of like the progression of makeup. So I filmed this video, took me hours, because obviously I didn't know what I was doing. And I sent it to my best friend, literally after she had begged me to start my YouTube channel for months. And I was like, okay, I did my first video, what do you think? And she was like, um, this is terrible. And I was like, excuse me, you're the one who told me to do this? Like, hello? And she was like, well, if I'm watching you on a video, like, I don't wanna read the screen and I don't wanna see pictures. And I was like, oh, you're really gonna make me talk to the camera? Fine. So that, after that, and that video is still online, by the way, after that, that was when I filmed my first videos where I was like actually talking to the screen. And what I didn't realize I was doing at the time that was not only helping me, but helping other people was that I used to take looks that like other women on YouTube would do that were like white or like Asian, you know, whiter complexions. And I would tweak them for my skin tone. And I didn't realize that other people were also at that time looking for tutorials for people with darker skin like myself. I didn't realize that was like a whole thing. And so that's kind of like why my, at the time my channel took off, I was doing these looks that were like colorful and sculpted and kind of unique. And it wasn't the first of its kind, but again, this is like 2009, like information is hard to find and it's hard to find people who look like you easily. I knew that I wanted black women to feel beautiful. That's always been my why. I would say a year after I got my first viral video, um, it took me five years to get to 100K subscribers. Cause I put up that, I remember putting up that video and I was at like 95,000. I was like right on the cusp. Mind you, it took me five years to do this. And then when that video go, went viral, I got 100,000 new subscribers in that month. And it was really cool. It was like, I've never seen something like so literal right in front of my face, you know? At the forefront of my content, no matter what, I knew that I wanted black women to feel beautiful when they came to my channel. That's always been my why, literally from the day that I started. One thing about the internet, it'll expose you to different personalities from all walks of life, you know, that you probably otherwise would not have been exposed to. As I got older, I started realizing there's only one you, so like, own it. When you look at the Forever Moon brand, you just see like, wow, black excellence. So the Forever Mood Girl is definitely a Sephora girl. So it only made sense that we were gonna be there. And it's been awesome. It's like women, it's like black lead. So I feel like when you look at the Forever Mood brand, you just see like, wow, black excellence, but also like relaxation, you know? So I kind of just want to continue that. And it's really, it really is like quite literally the first of its kind at Sephora. So it's awesome, it's been really cool. And I love seeing, you know, people at the stores, you know, hey Jackie, you know, like tagging me, it's showing me the store shelves and the candles is always gone, like snatch. They be, they be sending me pictures of empty shelves. I'll be like, period. <laughs> I think unplugging is everything.
Make sure you're like stopping to just be present and like unplugging sometimes because that's important. It's just something about being able to light up a room and like closing your eyes and feeling like you're at the beach for a moment or you're in a coffee shop for a moment or you're in a bakery for a moment. I rely on that, especially when I'm getting work done or maybe I'm like editing photos or if I'm like trying to test out a new scent. Those things are important to me. And I think unplugging is everything. I was talking about this earlier. I was actually on Instagram live with Sephora and I was talking about how important it is to just unplug sometimes. Like accessibility is, is great because right now we have the Twitter, the Gram, the iMessage, the WhatsApp, you know. There's so many different ways to get in touch with not only me, but other brand owners. But make sure you're like stopping to just be present and like unplugging sometimes because that's important. And if you're too accessible to everybody else, how are you going to be available for yourself? You know, you can't be spreading yourself too thin. Thanks for tuning in to my episode of We Built This, presented by Sephora and Helmand Grad.